good too. Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> it looks good. Get that dope footage. Whenever you're ready. All right, so the rig we're using today is uh, like a Carolina rig, and it's pretty common for trout. Basically, you take some line, uh, like four to eight pound. After like below that, it breaks too easily, I find. And once above that, it's too thick, and the trout seem to not bite it because they're quite line shy. So you start off by tying some line to a barrel swivel. I like to use the uni knot for everything. I find it's the strongest. And then cinch that up. And then you want to trim it just so it looks clean. And to that, we measure about, I like four, three to four feet a line. And I tie that to a octopus hook. Uh, this is, I think, a size eight. Nice and small so the trout don't bite it, or don't bite it and feel that it's uh, something's off and uh, spit it out. I just tie another uni knot to it. <laughs> and then it's really important to trim this one because if they feel the end of the line, then the chances are they'll spit it out uh, and they might feel it while they're swimming past. And then we uh, you add a floating bait. They'll say on the package whether it's floating or not. And basically, you just take uh, these are Berkeley Power Eggs garlic scent. Uh, you'll find what color works best for your lake. I like oranges and yellows. Uh, sometimes yellow is just called chartreuse. And then you rig those on. And basically, that's the rig. Until we add a. Uh, egg sinkers. I like using uh, barrel sinkers or uh, bullet sinkers because uh, like you'd use on Texas rig because I find that it kind of ignores the weeds more because uh, they're like slimmer. So these are two quarter ounces separated by a bead. Uh, so it's a uh, half ounce weight and I use a snap swivel on the end of that so I can change leaders as I go. Maybe I'll make like a five foot leader and a three foot leader and if one of them's not working I'll just swap one out for another. you cast always make sure that the uh, uh, snap swivel is closed uh, sometimes it comes undone by itself and now I've actually lost a fish from not checking it because it was undone so this is essentially the rig where you have the hook make sure uh, it covers the eye but uh, it's not too high up otherwise the fish might bite it and if it's too low uh, it might actually uh, not, not be big enough for the fish's mouth to get around it so I kind of have it like having the two eggs right uh, over the eye of the hook. And what that looks like is you drop it in the water, so you cast out far, and it starts sinking. And this, the weight will go to the bottom, and the bait will float up. And if a trout picks it up, he'll be able to freely run with the line, uh, and the weight will stay in its place, so your rod will start shaking. Uh, to kind of put that into perspective, I'll cast it out. We'll cut that. <laughs> we can cut whatever. <laughs> we cast it out and let it sink. Once uh, you leave the bail open, once it closes, or once it stops, the line stops moving, you can set it in like a rod holder or up against a rock like this. And that usually is good. 
but you want to make sure that it's nice and taut and that it's up against the weight you'll feel like a little resistance when you know you've hit the end and basically you leave that there and because it's freely moving when the trout uh, picks up the egg uh, the line will start moving and then your tip will start twitching and you set the hook and there's your fish sweet thank you Sasha <laughs> that's five minutes long I was just got one <laughs> nice Sasha how's it feel pretty good nice You just gonna bring it over to shore? What do you think? You gonna keep it? No, it's small. It is small, but could if you wanted. You gonna get him right here? I'll hold your rod. Still has lots of fight. Oh, he's kind of gut hooked. Really? I've got some needle nose. Oh. If you need yeah. them, want me to get him out? Sure. All right. Here you go. Awesome. I'll show you.